Greetings, hi. Uh, in this episode, we're going to look at the 5n plus 1 problem and see how it can shed some light on the 3n plus 1 problem. So first thing, did we skip 4? What about the 4n plus 1 problem? That one's not too interesting. No matter what n is, the next number's odd, so it's just going to be one odd number after another, and since odd numbers always go up, almost every number is just going to spin off into infinity. So let's focus on 3n plus 1 and 5n plus 1. We noticed before the 3n plus 1 sequences trend downwards, statistically speaking. Half the time you increase n by 50% and half the time you decrease it by 50%. So all numbers seem like they go to 1. 5n plus 1 sequences, on the other hand, trend upwards because uh, 5 is a bigger multiplier. But nobody knows for sure if any of those numbers truly diverge to infinity. Probably they do. For this episode, though, let's focus on loops, especially circuit loops. So for 3n plus 1, the bottom member of a circuit loop is this, which simplifies to 3 to the x minus 2 to the x over 2 to the k minus 3 to the x. For 5n plus 1, the denominator is 2 to the k minus 5 to the x. And you might think the numerator simplifies to 5 to the x minus 2 to the x, but it's actually 5 to the x minus 2 to the x over 3. It's a pretty funny thing. So here's our old numerological chart for the 3n plus 1 circuit loops. Down the left is x, the number of up moves in the circuit, and across the top is k minus x, the number of down moves. Inside the chart, we have the denominator, and over to the left here, we have the numerator, which only depends on x. So if the denominator evenly divides the numerator, we have an integer circuit loop. And in the upper left-hand corner, we have one up move and one down move, which is the one, two, one circuit. Just under that, we have two up moves and one down move, which is the negative five circuit. It goes negative five, negative seven, negative 10, negative five. And those are the only two integer circuits that we know about. How about for the five n plus one problem? Here's a numerological, numerological chart with its numerators and denominators. This time there are three places where the denominator evenly divides the numerator. So there are three integer circuits. The bottom member of this circuit is negative one divided by one or negative one. So negative one times five plus one divided by two uh, is negative two. And if we divide by that by 2, we're back to negative 1. So it's a short circuit. And this circuit here has two up moves and three down moves. And its bottom member is 7 divided by 7, or 1. So the circuit is 1, 3, 8, 4, 2, 1. You can see 5n plus 1 circuit loop for the number 1 is a lot longer than the 3n plus 1s. It also shows that the circuit loop for 1 doesn't have to be in the upper left hand corner like it was in the 3n plus 1 chart. And by the way, for 3n plus 1, we previously pr proved that the denominator could never equal the numerator unless x equals 1. And that was an easy proof involving evens and odds. But this proof doesn't carry, uh, carry over to the 5n plus 1 problem. On the other hand, now that we've found a case where the denominator equals the numerator, so that the bottom member of the circuit is 1, well, we can be sure it'll never happen again anywhere in this chart. That's because one can't be the bottom member of two different circuits. If you start with one and apply our deterministic rules, only one thing's going to happen. Finally, let's check out this third circuit whose bottom member is uh, 13 times 3 over 3 or 13. That's three moves up and four moves down, and we're back to 13. This is definitely the craziest circuit loop we've seen so far. And it shows that as you move away from the upper left corner of this chart, you still might find a case where this divided by that is an integer. So if we're trying to prove this is never divisible by that, our proof is going to have to make room for exceptions like these, which aren't necessarily nestled up in the corner. And by the way, this tiny denominator of 3 is really great because it's easy for a numerator to be divisible by 3. So how did it get to be so small? That's because 2 to the 7th minus 5 cubed is 128 minus 125 equals 3. It's really rare for two perfect powers to get that close. Okay, last thing. When we compare these two charts, the 5n plus 1 chart has a lot of factors of 3 everywhere and no factors of 5. 
And that's natural because 2 to the k minus 5 to the x isn't divisible by 3 because 2 to the k, sorry, <laughs> 2 to the k minus 5 to the x isn't divisible by 5 because 2 to the k isn't divisible by 5. Whereas in the 3 and plus 1 chart, we got a lot of 5s but no 3s for the opposite reason. Okay, to sum up, 5n plus 1 is a little bit different from 3n plus 1, but in terms of divisibility and loops, uh, it's good to think about both problems at the same time and avoid getting trapped into thinking that loops uh, have to go only a certain way uh, or have a certain property. Okay, see you next time.